the questions with him were, is he fast enough? Can he, can he reach that bar? Uh, with Dave down, it was the opposite. Like they knew, all right, he can play at the NFL level. He can run with everybody. Um, but does, can he pick up the game at all? And they kind of just said, you know what? We don't have other options. So let's just throw him in the deep end of the pool. And he played well at times. And part of it was just learning on the job. And we always talk about how live reps are important. And you can't, you can't, no matter what you do in practice, you can't replicate live reps. And he's a perfect example because he got, he only got better when he got on the field. It is a football Friday here on Birds 365. You're Mac and Mac guys. McMullen and McDonald here to hang with you and talk ball for the next two hours, as our coach would say. He loves talking ball, as do we here on Birds 365. Better than talking on the tennis court, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. you had to revisit that? You go back there, Well, you weren't, you weren't talking ball on me, so I had to make some kind I, of smart-ass I... quip. Yeah, I like appreciate the smart ass clip, but I don't think it fits because is tennis even considered ball? Mm, probably not. No. no. See, it, I imagine it, to some people. I, and I guess it all depends on what you grow up doing. Uh, yeah. Grew up doing. To me, ball was basketball. If yeah. you're playing ball, you're to out me, there on basketball the court. as well. Growing up, now it's football. Now every they they've co op the word. The football world. The Have they, generation. or or just as Nick oh, Sirianni? No. Tried. Everybody uses it. Everybody uses okay. it. Okay, yeah, uh, they've co-opted it. No doubt about it. It's probably my uh, overly uh, important attitude that thinks it's still basketball. Kind of like forever, I never wanted to give up the fact that baseball was the national pastime. And yeah. it was for a real oh, long it time. It long, was the national for pastime. the younger people out there for a very long time. It was. It and was. Now you just can't even begin to make the argument. Uh, no. The National Football League is big footed baseball and every other sport. But I don't think they've gotten the co opt ball. Ball is played on the, the, the blacktop. It's yeah. played on the hardware. It's not played on a football field. You know, Sorry, that's an interesting I'm not ready to give that one up yet. I'll give up the fact that baseball is no longer a national pastime. That's the National Football League. Now, you but know, ball is still played with a round ball. I know we got to get to our subject, but just real quick, because I have you here, obviously. Quick tangent. That, that brings up an interesting topic to me. When did you start to realize like all right it's no longer baseball because you've been on the air a long time can you can you really i mean oh, obviously I it was gradual but when it, it was a time when you woke up one morning and said you know what i can't make this argument anymore i can absolutely tell you when it was uh it was when i moved to philadelphia in 1990 i grew up in new york where oh by the way new york is still baseball still centric. baseball yeah and not just because the Mets and the Yankees have the best record in the American League and the National League together. Well, I think the Dodgers might have snuck by the Mets. The Mets might only have the second best record in the National League right now. But the Mets and the Yankees are both having serious years. Even when the Mets and the Yankees are <laughs> mediocre, baseball reigns in New York. And that's where I grew up. That's where I yeah. uh, lived for the first tournament. And then I moved to Philadelphia. And I found out that the Philadelphia Eagles were the number one team here in town above the Phillies, the Flyers, the Sixers, college basketball, anything else. It wasn't really close that the Eagles were. I said, all right, well, maybe it's a Philly thing. But then I started to pay more attention, and I said, damn, it's not just a Philly thing. I thought Philly was maybe isolated. Okay, they're a big football town. Fine. No, what I found out was New York is a big baseball town. Fine. That's the yeah. way they look at things. And the rest of the country is kind of lining up with the Eagles fans here in Philadelphia yeah. that – the now, it's Football interesting the you, thing. you mentioned because, well, New York has the Yankees, which are sort of the team, you know, the Dallas Cowboys of baseball. You either love them or hate them. But um, it, it, when the Giants were good, like how, how, how much was the gap closed? Because they were good not, for a long time. Not. Not? New York's a baseball town. Always has been, always will be. It's not really close. Even as you say, the Yankees are the number one team because they're the Yankees. The Mets have a major following in New York. Uh, they adopted all the Giants and 
uh, Dodgers fans that moved out to the West Coast. Uh, yeah, baseball still reigns supreme, and at no point has it really gotten close. Same way here with the Eagles in, in town. When the Phillies went to uh, the World Series back-to-back -back years and went to the playoffs five straight years, do you think it really got close here in town? No, I don't think it got it close, but it closed the gap. I mean, the Phillies were a big deal. You know, I remember walking around town. I never saw so many stinking Phillies jerseys in my life. I mean, everybody in my neighborhood was wearing Phillies jerseys. Now I can't find one. Now I can't find one to save my life. So it does when you do have success and close the gap. But no, it's never it's never been close. In New York and Philadelphia are much alike. The only difference is which team is sitting atop. It's football here in Philadelphia. It's baseball in, in New York. All right. Uh yes, we, we are here to talk about the Eagles, and that's talking about the Eagles, the fact that they are far and away, run away, the most important team, most talked about team, most revered team in town. Um, we are coming up on another season. J-Mac, we are at day 18. That's the countdown to the opening of camp, even though you <clears> won't <throat> be getting grass time on the 18th. You told us yesterday. Now they wait a couple of days before they invite you guys over to, to check out what they actually are or aren't doing prepping for the season. And the uh, opening day game is 65 days away. So we're starting to get a little close, Ooh. starting to feel the countdown. Um, when John McMullen goes back to work, not sitting here BSing with me for two hours a day. Um, J Mac, I was doing the prep for the show today and I just, this kind of fell in my lap and jumped out at me. Um, we are 26 months removed from the 2020 NFL draft. And I remember prepping for the NFL draft. You and I hadn't started, uh, with Jacob media yet. Uh, birds 365 was, uh, not a concept yet, um, but uh, on the air on WIP, talked a lot about the Jalen Hurts pick, second round pick. How can you take a quarterback? What are they thinking? They just gave Carson Wentz all over, blah, blah, blah. And I did like the pick. And that was one that I kind of hit on the head because I said, they're drafting him to be their inexpensive backup. And oh, by the way, he's got some potential. So you got a little safety net going forward. And that's exactly the way it played out. Didn't I didn't think that was going to be the way it was going to play out. I thought he was going to be the backup here for years to come. And when Carson went down with an injury, you plug him in and uh, you still got a chance to win better than you did in previous years. But that 2020 draft, <clears throat> every single player going into this year is kind of sitting on the precipice. And it could either go real good or it could go real bad. Well, not Jalen, Jalen Rager, not Jalen Hurts. I, Both. You, and go you either real good or real bad. Jalen Rager could over. be cut by the time the Eagles get to 65 <clears throat> days from now and start the season. You know, well, that's, that's what, real bad? Well, no, that's what I meant. I think the decision's already been made with Jalen Rager. If he's here, at best, he's the fifth receiver, and you're only keeping him because you're embarrassed that you took him in the first round. That's literally the only question about it. So, in other words, I'm saying it's already – there's no precipice. He's already over the precipice, at least in this town. I think, you know, who knows? He might need a change of scenery. He might be one of those guys. He might get a breath of life without the pressure outside Philadelphia, all that kind of stuff. But it ain't happening here. Sort of like Ben Simmons with the Sixers. It ain't happening here. So don't worry about what happens everywhere else. Um, it ain't happening here with Jalen Reagan. That's all I meant from okay. I think that part of it's already, you know, you can put the period on it. Right. And uh, the, the way I said it was either real good or real bad. And real good is not an option. That's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we've yeah. already discounted that. So the only possibility is – does he cling to a roster spot or do he actually suck it up and go, all right, yeah, that's a mistake. And we don't have the roster space to continue to keep him here for wide receiver five. Uh, he's not really a blocker. And the coach loves blocking wide receivers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jalen Rager could be cut. Jalen Hurts could get a 35 to 40 million per yeah, year. That's, that's a precipice right there. You could be out of a job or you could be making $40 million. How's that? It How's will... that for a choice? And the one that has the potential upside is the second round pick, not the first round yeah. pick. The yeah. very questioned second round pick, may I add, <laughs> for the Eagle fans out there. Uh, so Hurts at number three. Davion Taylor. 
How much do we talk about Dave Ann Taylor here on Birds 365? Probably more than anybody else, because we're the show for serious Eagles fans. But and even we don't ever fan. talk about them. Yeah, we are the show for serious Eagle fans, and we bring them up like twice yeah. a week. Yeah, but we do bring them up, and we talk about Davion. And I do think, and I've mentioned a couple times, I wouldn't write Davion off just yet. I ju- I think the problem with him, obviously, number one, he's got to stay healthy. He's got to stay on the field. But they really liked what he brought to their defense last season when they kind of threw him into the deep end of the pool. We all know the story. He barely played in high school. He played one game because of his family's faith and he wasn't allowed to play. Seventh day at Venice and um, had to go to junior college, then transferred to Colorado. Really athletic, but really raw when he got to the Eagles. And, you know, they were having such issues at linebacker early last season with Eric Wilson. We know the story. And at some point, it, it, Alex Singleton as well, who's a good player, is a good football player, Alex Singleton, but he's limited. You know, there's certain things you just can't do because he doesn't have the, the high level physical traits. So all of a sudden it became you know, TJ Edwards and Davion Taylor. And from Davion's perspective, they knew TJ could get it from a mental perspective. You know, they knew he was a smart player, instinctive, all that stuff. The questions with him were, is he fast enough? Can he, can he reach that bar? Uh, With Davion, it was the opposite. Like they knew, all right, he can play at the NFL level. He can run with everybody. Um, But does, can he pick up the game at all? And they kind of just said, you know what? We don't have other options, so let's just throw him in the deep end of the pool. And he played well at times. And part of it was just learning on the job. And we always talk about how live reps are important. And you can't, you can't, no matter what you do in practice, you can't replicate live reps. And he's a perfect example because he got, he only got better when he got on the field. Like when they're trying to teach him off, you can only do so much you know, in the classroom and say, all right, here's the X's, here's the O's. This is what you're supposed to do. You got to, you got to get on the field. And he was showing some signs and then he got hurt and got hurt twice. Um, But boy, he's athletic. (laughs) So, you know, that enamors coaches. And we all talk about TJ and Kaiser White and Kobe Dean. And you're the president of the Kobe Dean fan club. And look, those three have a much better option, you know, if odds, I should say, of of playing more. But I wouldn't rule them out. That's one of those where I don't think it's like 2%. I think it's more like 25% that Davion Taylor finds a way to sneak in because he's more athletic than all of them. So if the switch goes off, you know, then you start saying, oh, we really got something here. Right. And I remember you, you and I talked about it all last year. Oh, they're warming up to him. They're pushing him in there. They're showing that they've got uh, faith in the athleticism that he brings. And then he went out and signed Kazi Wright. If they really thought he went over a hump last year, I don't know that they bring in a guy like Kazi White during free agency this year. Well, that's fair, but you also have to put in the injury aspect. Uh, you know, are they concerned because he, he he's, he's always hurt? Or are they concerned because he's not going? I can't really answer that. All I can say is when he was on the field, he kind of splashed at times. And he was really, really more physical than I thought he was going to be. I remember that Denver game where the the famed uh, city versus country fumble quote of Darius Slay. Well, go watch that. See so he knocks the football out. Just, you know, that was Davion Taylor. Uh, really physical player. Just really gifted from a physical perspective. But, you know, he was raw. Everybody knew he was raw. He's still raw. And it, can he turn the corner? Who knows? And the other guy who went right after him was Kayvon Wallace, who the Eagles went out and got, well, they re signed uh, their own uh, safety. And then they went out and got Jaquiski Tart. Again, how much do you read into their evaluation of Kayvon Taylor? by the moves that they made during the offseason. Do you think this is a make or break year for him? Oh, yeah, with Kayvon, definitely. Because uh, Kayvon has had more opportunities. They thought, you know, he's a lesser pick because he's not 
as gifted as as somebody like Davion Taylor, but you know the Eagles thought Kayvon Wallace uh, played at a high level in college at Clemson. Um, should have been more prepared. They thought he'd probably be in the mix by now. And the fact that they're going out and signing uh, Jaquiski Tart in 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 mid June and you know bringing Anthony Harris back and crossing their fingers on Marcus Epps. That's that's not a positive sign for Kayvon Wallace, I would say. So you've got a bunch of guys that are coming out of that that we go down. Jack Driscoll, uh, solid pick. You get a fourth-round pick who stepped in, has played as much as he has already played in the NFL and projects as a tremendous backup this year with flexibility to play a couple of different positions. That was a really good pick by Howie Roseman, at least as per results the first couple of years. All right, Hightower is probably not going to crack the, the, the road. He's thing. hanging on. He's back. <laughs> I know that he's back, but I would uh, bet. Practice squad 16. He might He might make the practice squad, but I'm with you. That's, that's about it. That's practice. He's got practice squad written all over him. And Sean Bradley, again, a linebacker who's, if he's going to either be on the practice squad or, and or spend time with the big roster this year, it's going to have to be about special teams. Oh uh, yeah, and he's he's gonna be on the route. He's one of their best special teams players. Um, but that's his role. Yeah. I mean, there would have to be a lot of injuries to 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 get him on the field as a linebacker now with the added depth. But he's a really good in fact if remember Nick Sirianni went up on the podium when he was talking with us and tried to get him in the Pro Bowl as a special teams player. So he's one of their two or three best special teams player. You could argue the best. So he's going to have a, a significant role on this team, but it's with Michael Clay. It's not with the defense. Fair enough. And uh, can you even tell me where Prince Taga Winoa is? Yeah, you know, it's funny because you bring up Jack. That's an interesting story. I, I think he's still in Kansas City. I have to double check. I th- he was on their practice squad last year. So I assume they rolled him over with the futures deal. Um, you know, coming into the draft, like Prince was, Prince played left tackle at Auburn. Jack Driscoll played right tackle. Prince was a higher graded prospect than from just about everybody. I mean, no matter who your favorite draft go-to guy is, they all had Prince as a, a second round. There were a few who had him as a bridge pick, some in late first round, early second round. And he just had a terrible knee. It's one of those situations where, like, we don't know. We don't have the medicals. That's the one thing that any reporter doesn't have access to. Occasionally, a few things leak, and sometimes there are lies, and and that's the case. And he kept falling and falling and falling. Um, And you think, wow, they got Prince Tega Wanahu in the sixth round. That looks good. That looks good on paper. He's better than Driscoll. They played in the same offense. Um, but he was hurt and he's, he's got a knee problem and, you know, it was, it was a nice flyer. I had no problem with that in the, in the sixth round right. and he's still, and he's still hanging around. Um, so I have no problem with that pick at the time. Right. So the Eagles 20, it seems like maybe it's cause we talk Eagles every single day that doesn't that seem like about 20 years ago, the 2020 draft. It was only yeah. Life moves fast, Joe. It was only twenty six months ago that yeah. we were breaking down that draft and overanalyzing what Harry Roseman did. Well, it's it's uh, now that we're entering season three for these players. Some like the Prince have moved on, abdicated their throne, uh, but some are still here fighting for jobs or fighting for forty million dollar per year contracts. It's funny how things can change so drastically in about a 26-month period. I am John McMahon. I'm Jody McDonald. We got two good guests coming your way today. First up, our buddy Les Bowen from NJ.com. And in hour number two, we'll punch up Eric Edholm, uh, NFL insider. We'll talk both Eagles and the entire National Football League with Eric when we get him up. But we expect Les Bowen to join us next here on Birds 365. 